When I was 15, you know, I was in the ninth grade, I went to Mexico as part of a Spanish class trip. And we did the usual, you know, we went to Chichen, we went to uh, various other sites. And, um, and I had this amazing, wonderful time, and then I forgot all about it. Somehow or another, I was 16 and 17, and other things became much more important than that, than that trip. And then when I was at, uh, doing my undergraduate degree, uh, three quarters of the way through it, I was a, a sociology major and uh, had, had gotten very excited about sociology and was basically through the program. And I had gotten a, a Ford Fellowship, so in my last year I was, I was teaching and I had very few classes left in my undergrad. And at that time there was a position which came open at our school. And um, we hired, uh, interviewed and hired an archaeologist. And it was the first archaeologist that had come into the school. And as, uh, he's actually still there, Dr. George Bay. He's a ceramicist and a Mayanist. Um, and when I finished, I took some classes with George at that time. But when I finished, um, he said, Jim, would you, I've got to go down to Mexico this summer. Would you like to go? And I said, absolutely. And he said, well, we're going to drive. And I said, perfect. So I drove to New Orleans from Mississippi where I grew up and we got on the road and we drove uh, coastal, east coastal Mexico and, and then down into Yucatan and we stopped everywhere we could stop and we probably visited 25, 30 sites and, and so on and so forth and finally got to Egblom where I actually did work and then went back and worked and so on. But it was that traveling back through Mexico um, that really um, sort of brought back all those old memories of me being 15 and how much I, like, how did I forget this? And, um, and I didn't want to stop after that. But, you know, th this summer, we, when we were working at, at uh, Cajalpech, we were, we were digging, AIA gave uh, a FAR grant to excavate Structure C6, which is this long-range structure at the end of the ball court in the southeast corner of, of the Acropolis there at, at Cajalpech. And so last summer we excavated half of it and the stonemasons came in after we were finished and they re, or consolidated, but rebuilt um, the western part of the structure. And then this year we went back this summer and, and excavated the other half. And as we were doing so, we came across a, a broken stela at the base of one of the levels of the structure. And we all started getting very, very excited. And we were thinking, oh, this is going to be some royal tomb and so on and so forth. So uh, we got permission from Dr. Awe to open up a unit there in, in the plaza floor. And we excavated down through that. And we didn't find a tomb whatsoever. But what we found was then a plaster floor. And we started excavating around the plaster floor and found the edge of a structure. And so we opened up more and more units. Um, and and so then at this point, you know, we've opened up this really massive unit and I'm standing on this floor and the student says to me this sort of question, Jim, what's so exciting about this? And I, and I started thinking about it and I said, I'm standing in a building. I'm standing in this room on this plaster floor. Nobody has stood on this for 3,500 years. I am the first person to do this. And it was like, I don't, I, you know, in my job, I normally deal with historic farmsteads in Kentucky. I deal with things that were occupied in 1810. Not, not, not like that. It was just an amazing feeling. And I just kind of said it to the student, like it was no big deal. It's like, oh, you know, hey, I'm standing here on this you know, floor. And it just started to sink in as I was speaking. Fascinating. That's a wonderful, oh, excuse me, that's a wonderful sight. It really is. But we were working on this late prehistoric fishing village on Middle Bass Island in Lake Erie. And this was late in the season, so all the guest houses were closed and no tourists were there. And we stayed after the ferry service stopped. And, or, was, or they were running the ferry just for us. And uh, so we were out on the island and we were working and we noticed it started to get very dark and strange looking. Um, and we started to pack up and we were making calls to the ferry and having trouble getting contact with the ferry and the ferry finally it turns out the ferry can't come and so we said okay so there are maybe ten of us and uh, we're trying to figure out what's going to happen because it looks like this sort of tornado was you know is going to come in and 
Um, so the captain of the ferry calls us and he says, I've got a, you know, just some little boat, so I'm going to come and get you. So we're standing at the, at the docks at, at the island. We've made it to the docks at the island, and we can see him coming across. And there's points where his boat is good seven feet above anything, and he's just bouncing through. And so we know this is the ride we're going to get back, you know. And, and the funny thing is Lake Erie at maximum is 30 feet deep. And so in this area, it's probably 12. You know, and he's in a boat, and we're going, and we're just watching the water go like this, so you, we know you could easily hit bottom. And and so we get in the boat, all of us get in the boat. There's not, there's certainly not enough space for everybody to sit down. I think there's like four seats, and so there's all the ten of us, and we're standing, and we're riding back, doing this whole jumping thing. And and the the captain says, whatever you do, don't move. And so we're we're uh, bouncing through, and and we've got one person with us who could never follow any directions from any of us, much less follow directions from the captain. And he moves. And the whole of us are falling over each other, trying not to knock over the, knock over the boat, um, so on and so forth. Finally, we're in our minds, everybody's going, OK, how? And we've got this little zipped up tarp thing over us. And everybody is going, now how do we push him down and step over him so we can jump out of the boat and swim away if, if this actually goes bad? And um, that didn't happen. But, um, but we made it back. But it was just absolutely ridiculous because we had seen this, you know, this boat coming to us. And we knew what we looked like going back. It was just, it was just in a day's work. In terms of the Maya, I think one of the most important things for kids to know, because I, I think some adults know, don't know, but that is that the Maya are still here. 